Welcome to the Strong Single and Human podcast, a real look at single parenting, the ups and downs, and how to navigate life with kids on your own while keeping sane. Covering subjects such as domestic violence through to fussy eaters and solo dating. I'm your host, Claire Martin. Welcome. This week's guest is an international name expert and the founder creator of Nemology Science, the study of the placement of the letters in a name. After 15 years of research, followed by three years of testing in over 70 countries, she has evaluated thousands of names since 1995. Her best selling book, Know the Name, Know the Person, is the first in the sequence, followed by Know the Name, Know the Spirit, and Know the Name, Know How to Connect. You may have seen her on Good Day LA, New York City's Fox News, Good Morning Arizona, and in various other cities on NBC, CBS, and ABC, or have heard her interviewed on one of the hundreds of radio shows. And believe you me, she has also been on hundreds of podcasts as well. Today, she's hired by human resource departments in choosing appropriate candidates to interview, by lawyers in how to present cases to judges, and individuals who wish to know themselves better and maximize their ability to connect with others. She's, she also assists nationally and internationally in naming new businesses, new products, and when people wish to change their names. Hi, welcome, Sharome. Thank you for agreeing to come and speak to us on the podcast today and tell us all about your story. Wow, it seems like you're really, really busy at the moment. Well, forever um, regarding... Um, Pneumology science. Wow. So, look, tell us about yourself and how you came to create pneumology. I hope I'm saying that right. It's pneumology, but it's spelt funny because okay. I couldn't trademark a common word like name, N A M. Yeah. So, in Latin, the word for name is N E I M. Okay. So I spelt it nameology, but with the Latin spelling. Okay. So, that's okay. So, I've, I've sort of been pronouncing it okay so that's cool that's all right oh so looking forward to this thank you for inviting me no it's cool I can't wait to dive in to this subject I've spoken to you previously about this I've researched a lot online my gosh it's just amazing I just really uh want to understand like who you are and how come you created pneumology well I started seeing patterns Um, I was in my sixth year. I was 26 years old. I was in my sixth year of teaching or starting it. And you know how you go to make the seating charts and you just have this list of children's names. And so we have five classes of 30 kids each. And so it wasn't until I was in the fourth class that I realized that my brain was thinking just like I do when I already know the students. So like it was saying, Ah, don't put Joshua next to Julie together. They're going to be clowns, but separated, they're okay. And Stephanie's going to be stubborn. So put her over on the side so you don't have to change your seat so often. Derek's going to need extra help. Put him up close. And I'd been doing that for three classes. And all of a sudden, as I started the fourth one, I went, wait a minute. This is how I think once I know the kids, but I don't know these guys. I just know their names. So I decided to go back and write down my impression of every child. And all I had was their name to start with. And then I thought, okay, I'm putting it away. I'll look at it at winter break. I want to get to know the kids for who they are. When I looked at that three months later, I was so astonished at its accuracy that I thought, okay, my brain has picked up some kind of a pattern. Now, how do I make what's unconscious conscious? Now, you've got to know that my brain is very well trained in patterns because I'm a math major and I have my master's. So that's all math is, is patterns. So it took me 15 years to figure out all the patterns and all the nuances wow. and I teach it in 15 hours all the basics in 15 hours wow wow and like and so okay so how how does it work as such so is it the okay. letter of the name or is it the actual name itself as a whole or okay so the placement of the letters make a difference so the first name is the, is the essence of who you are. So that's your natural piece. 
Your last name is your nurturing piece that represents your environment. So you're dropping the first name into the last name to see what the effect of the environment is. If not, everybody with the same first name would be the same. And we all know that you're not. And the middle name is the gifts and talents that you slid in here that you already came in fully developed. Wow, okay. So if you know how to do the middle name, it's like, okay, those are the bonuses that you came in wow, with, okay, okay, for those people that have a middle name. Now I wish I had then, six middle names now. <laughs> Instead of only one, but hey. <laughs> okay. Then the the placement of the letter makes a difference. So like the first vowel and the first name gives us our communication style. It gives us uh, how we feel loved, how we show love, what kind of gifts we like, how somebody can upsell us. You know, I mean, there's so much information in that first vowel or the first name. Then the first letter. Sorry. I was just wondering, does it matter what vowel it is? So, because obviously there's A, E, I and all that. So does it, does it matter what one it is? Yes. So each vowel has a different. Very different. And I'm glad you asked that, Claire, because for everybody listening, the whole book that just does the vowels is the third book called Know the Name, Know How to Connect. And it's absolutely free for your listeners on my website, any page but the Okay, wow. Okay, thanks. Then you sign in and and get access to it. Okay. And so um, then the first letter of your first name is the first impression that you give others. The last letter of your first name is the lasting impression. And the first thing people talk about behind your back when they go to describe you. Okay. And then all the rest are middle letters and they they take a little bit longer to get to know somebody. Now, just like when you're in a a public setting with a lot of people that you know, if you're sitting next to somebody you like, you'll be very talkative and very animated because you like that person. If you end up sitting next to somebody you don't care for, you're more quiet, reserved, you know, and you're to yourself. Well, the same thing with the letters. So what letters though... What letters are being sat next to make a huge difference in your name. So for an example, let me take a CH. It's the easiest one to explain. So Cs are all about they're charming and charismatic to cover their need to be in charge. I don't know what you mean. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So that's the C. And notice I give everything a mnemonic device so it's easier to remember. Then let's look at the H. The H is what I call the holy letter. And because you just let go and let God, you get in the river, you go wherever it takes you and you think I'm going to land exactly where I'm supposed to be because I've let go and I've let God. So here you have the C that wants to hold on and be in charge. And you got the H that wants to let go. Well, you put them next to each other and they have this battle. When should I be in charge? When do I need to let go? And so whether it's Michael, so it's in the middle of the name or Cheryl, it's at the beginning of the name. You know, it doesn't matter where it shows up, okay? When those two are together, it means people do things the hard way because they're constantly battling within themselves. Do I hold on? How much do I hold on? How much it, How much do I let go? I'm not comfortable letting go. I think I need to pull back and hold on more. Oh, but then I got this push to let go. I mean, it's a constant wow. battle. But so that's with the, if it was in the first name. But not if it's in a middle name. Only because I'm thinking of my brother, who is Neil Christopher Francis. If like he's out there listening, which the only won't be. difference is <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is if yeah. it's in the middle name, they're they're intermittent behaviors instead of oh, consistent well, that says a lot then. Okay, they still do it, but you're not going to yeah, see it well, as often. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, now if it's in the last name, it's the people around them are like that. Not that they are like that. So if the people around you are like that and your environment's like that, you can pick some of that up, even that, even though that's naturally not who you are. And if you look at the first name, then it'll tell you whether you're going to t- adopt that in as part of because you've adopted it because that's what you see from the people around you or whether you've rejected it and said, oh, no, 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 no. I see what's going on over there. I don't want that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Crikey. Because I just thought, wow, I didn't choose my son's name. Um, his sisters chose his name, so we can blame them. Um, but um, yeah, it's quite yeah. Can I address that for a minute? Well, of course, okay. of course you can. I'm sure, like he begins with an O, as most people okay. who listen to this know. Like my son's name is Oscar, so he be- so, begins with an O, and the sisters chose that. Oh, I didn't. So, so Oscar likes to be the boss and the one in charge. Oh my God! So yes. he likes to tell other people what to do. And okay. he's only so six. What happened- 
Well, it doesn't matter. It's in the name. It's constant. Every time you say his name, you're reinforcing it. Now, when there are still only seven religions on the planet, before I jokingly say they multiplied and divided and everybody made up their own, okay? When they were only seven, they all had some core concepts that they all agreed upon. And one of the core pieces that every religion agreed upon was that the incoming soul impresses upon the one that's going to name them what they want to be called. So we name ourselves. So your son named himself utilizing his Well, system. that wouldn't surprise me somehow. Um, yes, he always wants to be in control. He is the boss. And um, I wouldn't surprise me if he impressed I need to be Oscar on his sisters. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. Wow. Well, I'm sure it'll stand him in good stead when he's older and I'm getting all old and infirm and he needs to look after me. Well, I'm hoping. <laughs> okay, so cancel that. Uh, you're going to be, when you get um, with more age and wisdom, you're going to maintain your health and your bright oh, thinking. Oh, good. I hope so. Right. So. <laughs> I, I program myself to happy, healthy, yes. you know. I'm happy and I'm healthy. Oh, look, when I was younger, I was the most unhealthiest person ever. So, yeah, as I've got older, I've gone, oh, I need to, like, you know, rein it in here and do that. Wow, that's that's unbelievable. So, okay, so you realise and notice these patterns mainly because your brain is geared towards maths. And patterns, uh-huh. And patterns, right, which is just – which is fair enough. I mean, so had you always been interested in maths problems and math and patterns and things from a young age? At like, no. was this something that just? Uh -huh. Now, oh, I, okay. It's in my name. It's in both my first name and my birth wow. last name. So I was surrounded with it. So both of my parents have it in their first names and their last names. Oh okay, in their birth names. So I was surrounded with it. But I didn't take to it until I had this incredible teacher in eighth grade who just said, child, you have like a fourth grade math education. We're going to have to catch you up. And sure enough, she did. And then I just excelled and zoomed at it because she was a fabulous teacher. And the studies have shown that if you can have a really dynamic math teacher three years out of your 12 years in school, you will understand math. In other words, it's not that hard. We just complicate it. And I got to have her two of my years and then eighth and ninth grade and then 11th grade. I had another fabulous math teacher. Yeah. And so it and it's amazing to me how many of my classmates also became math majors that had those three same teachers. Yeah. Wow. And, let's, and look, and let's face it, the world is made up of patterns and math equations. You know, if anyone like is interested in quantum physics and all and physics and all of those things, that's how the world is is math equations and you know well they say that math is the language of the universe so where you find that in a name um the, it, everything shows up two or three different ways in a name okay so that everybody doesn't have to have the same letter combination to get a quality that they want okay so the most powerful of the three ways that that math ability shows up is when you have an O-N combination in your name. Like in my name, Sharon, it ends in the O-N. And then my birth last name ended in the O-N. So that's where it sits in my name. But another way it shows up is just to have a lot of N's in your name. Because N's are the grounded, very practical, logical approach to different things. So you want R's in your name. You want N's in your name. Okay, and then you want that O N combination in the first so name, you, or in all. It doesn't matter in anywhere word. in your names. Yeah, because if it's in your last name, you're picking it up from your environment. If it's in your middle name, you came in with it. If it's in your first name, you're going to develop it. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yes, I've got to remember. There's the, like three different sort of sections of it. Wow. Did okay. Uh, but, you, but you interpret everything the same. The letters don't change their meaning just because of where they are in your name it just changes like how you've like, acquired them as such like environment how you yeah. acquired it. yeah exactly yeah. wow so so okay <laughs> so the, i'm this this question my it's just popped into my head so apologies if this throws you but i'm just thinking like when you discovered nomology 
Um, and you were looking at it and creating it and taking your time to do all of this. Like, were, were you married at the time? I mean, did this cause you problems choosing friends and boyfriends or husbands or like, did you, if you, and if you were married, like, did you look at your husband's name and go, oh my cri- crikey, uh, now I understand a lot of things. I mean, you know, how did that all work out? Okay. So I was married at the time and I already had my two kids. Okay. Now, had I known this, what I know now, when I was there, I could have um, compared my, oh, I, I call him my husband because oh. he was my husband at one time. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I could have con- compared my husband's name with mine, seen where the potential conflicts were and how to solve them. Wow. Okay. But we have exactly opposite communication styles. Now, now that I know nameology science, I know it was my responsibility to learn his style. He would have never learned my style. Okay. But that was the hardest, the first vowel of an E, which is what he has, was the hardest one for me to figure out. And it was because it's so opposite and opposing to how I do things that it was like, oh my gosh, how does this one work? So now I understand it. And the story of how I got there is in the first book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Oh, okay. So there we go, everyone, if you want to know what went on. <laughs> right. So at once I understood it, it was like, oh, my gosh, it is crystal clear. Just the same thing where my daughter got a traditional spelling of her name. But had I known nameology science, I would have tweaked it and made her life a little easier. Wow. Okay. So when somebody's going to have a child, I always say, have the name impressed upon you, what you want to call your child, and then call me and I'll tell you how to tweak it so it's easier for you and your child to get along and to keep their lessons because your seven, your main purpose of why you're here is in your name and your seven subsets, your seven sub lessons are in your name, what you came to experience. And so we can keep those the same, but let's make it easier how we solve them and how we go about it. Oh, my it. gosh. Yeah, no, it just it popped in my head and I went, wow, you must like choosing friends and things like that must be quite interesting because like you meet someone, you go, wow, I really get on with this person. And um, yeah, and then you find out their name or whatever. And then you're going, oh, OK, I, that might be why or that might be why I don't get on with this person or whatever. Well, you look at a name and you go, okay, this one's going to have to take extra patience on my part because they have a combination. Okay, so if you have a word in your name, like let's say you've got the name of Cassandra. So now you're going to look at the second, third, and fourth letter in Cassandra. And that just means you are one. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. And then if you're missing one of the S's, then that just means you're a little one instead of a big oh, one. Oh, my, blimey. Oh, this is, so no wonder it's, no wonder you've got, what, five books on this subject. It's five, isn't it? Because you've got another one now coming out, haven't you? I've got the fourth one on this subject coming out, but it's my fifth book overall. Because everybody kept asking me, how do you know that? And I would say, you know, different things. Like if you get twirled in the water because the waves push you all around, how do you know to blow bubbles? Because bubbles always rise to the surface. And because most people drown because they don't know which way is up. So they run out of breath. How do you know that you blow bubbles and go to the surface? You know, and there's all kinds of what I considered everybody knew that people were always asking me as I was solving different problems in different places, especially when I became a teacher and then an administrator. And they would go, how do you know that? And I go, my dad taught me. Didn't your dad teach you this? So I made a itty bitty book that is called What Happens When? And it's literally how dad taught us how to think. And so he would give us a scenario at dinner. Like, what would you do if? And then us kids would all guess. And then he'd say, but how do you know if this is true? And how do you know whatever? So then we'd all change our minds. And so the book literally goes through. Here's the scenario. Here's a bunch of choices. What would you do? is the second part of every chapter. And then the third part is, this is how dad says to handle this is the best thing. And then the fourth part is how it showed up in my life. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's a, it's an educational book, whatever. And some of my friends, bless their hearts that were in their seventies and eighties, read the book. It's a real quick read. And they said, oh my gosh, I didn't even know everything that's in this book. And I thought, See, that's why I wrote it, because so many people go, how do you know that? And I go, my dad taught me. So it's literally a tribute to 
what my dad taught me to share with everybody that I thought, didn't your dad teach you that? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 exactly. And I know, and I know because we've spoken about it because I, I scuba dive. And so therefore I knew about the bubbles get, when, when you're diving and you're in a disorientated, um, sometimes you can be disorientated because it's blue above you, blue below you, blue around you, that you watch for your bubbles and where your bubbles go because your bubbles are telling you where the surface is. And sometimes you can get disorientated right. when you're diving. And so we talked about this previously, which, um, yeah, which like I was like, really doesn't everyone know that? But then you said some other things, yeah. and I like, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. So okay, so um, you basically, it's, but fifteen years research. What were you doing? Like you, you discovered this when you were actually, you know, dealing with children as a teacher. So did you continue? teaching and I'm sorry because I know I'm jumping around oh, here because things oh, yeah, are buzzing absolutely. through my head at the moment and I'm going oh, but I want to find out yeah, about absolutely. this so I'm trying to bring, bring it back to it like so so did you stay teaching or did you go well, hang on I need to develop this a bit further no, I did it in my spare time oh so my gosh. so like how I started with there were eight Davids in my life okay oh, and I never so have good I relationships with Davids so don't go there but anyway, I'm sure there's something <laughs> so, to be said about that. So I I put down each of the Davids across the top in their own column. And then I started putting down qualities and characteristics and who had which ones. And the qualities and characteristics that they all had, I went, okay, that's got to land in the name David somewhere in there. And then the qualities that this one has, but not that one, has to come from somewhere else. And it's got to either come from the middle or the last. And so that's how I started. And then... You know, the com the most common names of the students, I put them down and say, what have I noticed about this one? What have I noticed about that one? What about this one? Well, they all seem to have this quality. It's got to be in the first name. Anyway, and then after a while, I started breaking it down and saying, well, this person has this quality or this name does, and so does this name, but they're not the same name. So what do they have in common of the letters? And is the placement of the letters? It was, anyway, it just, that's why it took me 15 years. I know, well... How did you collate all this? Did you have like Excel spreadsheets all over the place that actually like had D names or D A na like how did you like how were you writing this no, down? It was, a lot of, it was a lot of papers and a lot of scratch because when I went through college, just to to say how long ago it was, we were using punch cards and computers. They didn't have that yet for us. Um, I started developing this before even the Apple 2G wow, came God out. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a long time ago. And so now I just had a lot of papers and a lot of scratch. And every time my dad would call me, which wasn't all that often, um, but every time he called me, I'd go, just a minute, dad, let me finish putting down my thoughts and then I'll be with you. And so after about the fourth or fifth time, he goes, Sharon, what are you always working on that you got to finish putting down your thoughts before you lose them so you can talk to me? And I said, well, I'm, I'm working on these patterns and these names. And he goes, what do you mean? So I, I said, okay, give me somebody's name that you know. Now, my dad's a doctor. He has lots of patients. He has lots of people he knows that I don't have any clue on. Plus, he was living in a different state than I lived in. So I said, give me the name of somebody you know that you know I don't know. And let me tell you about them. Just give me their name. So I did the first one and he gave me another name. I did the second one. And after five names, he said, I said, okay, dad, how many names is it going to take? Is it going to take five, 50, 500, 5,000? How many names do I have to show you? I'm on to something. And he goes, oh, 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 okay. I get what you mean. And then he said, he goes, well, what are you going to call this thing? And I said, well, it's all with letters. So I'm thinking about calling it alphabetology. And he goes, but you're not studying the alphabet. You're studying names. So he says, you need to call it nameology. But then I couldn't trade. I said, dad, yeah. I can't trademark a common word like name. So he says, use the Latin word, N-E-I-M. Wow. And then ology for the study of the names. And, and then he told me, he says, he says, well, I'm not going to endorse this. And I said, dad, I don't need your endorsement. I'm on to something. You know, I mean, he's very scientific minded and everything. And it was still early in the development. And I thought, how ironic the man that didn't want to endorse it because he didn't know enough about it, right, is the one that actually named it. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. And I thought, what a gift. And then he did get to get the very first copy of my book. Um, I hope you signed it for him. You know, that was pretty exciting. <laughs> oh, of course. of course. So, okay. So, But then so. you 
tested it in over 70 countries. So when when you went and tested it, okay, did you – you were testing other – like – like uh, foreign names as such as well were you testing because what we've mentioned a lot of western names here i you know claire oscar you know dave and all of this stuff so they're like what i would class as western names but were you testing it in the other countries regarding like um raj and well, i'm trying to think of other names that were you know it doesn't, it always works as long as they're using our lettering system. So I was already being invited to speak on spiritual topics in different places. And so I said, while I'm talking on that, can I also talk on names, this thing I'm developing? And that's how that, and then I'd say, good, because I want to test it. And I kept thinking if I'm wrong and I analyze a lot of names while I'm there of the people that are there, whatever their names are, whatever country I was in, Right. And I thought they'll tell me if I'm, you know, if it doesn't work. And everybody said, where can we get more information? So after I did a lot of talking over a three year time period in different places, I took time off from work to go do that. Um, then I came back and wrote the book. Wow. Wow. And and when you meet, when you say as long as they're using our let it, they have to be uh, using our letters. letters because I, I looked at the kanji and yeah. the hanji. I spent two years in Japan and a year in China. I've lived there and I was trying to figure it out for their kanji and the hanji, the letters, you know, whatever. And I thought too complicated. They got to use, you know, how we write our letters because <laughs> that's where the patterns were. And that's yeah. So I um, I'm trying to think. So in France, Jacques would be J-A-Q-U-E-S, I think. Right. And I so, been, it, I, it doesn't so, things, so that would be equal to our Jack, which we would spell in the UK as J-A-C-K. Right. But I look at how they spell it because whatever's on your birth certificate is literally clear the blueprint for your life. It gives you your timing. It gives you your strengths. It gives you your challenges. It gives you your overall purpose. It tells you how you show that you love somebody, how you receive and understand that you're being loved. I mean, it says how to upsell you. I go to a lot of companies and 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 show them how to sell to their clients and customers, how to make that quick connection based on their name. Okay, um, so let's delve into that then. How how do you how would you do that though? Like, oh, that's all in that free oh, book. That know the name. Know happy the days. On the website. I'm getting this book. <laughs> I'm going to be downloading this because if this helps me talk and communicate to people, how, even better. Better for everyone listening, better for me, better for, yeah. Wow. So in the first book, in the second chapter, Know the Name, Know the Person, went through the first vowels in the name. And then everybody says, how are you getting that out of there? And I thought, it's there. And everybody says, no, you need to spell it out more. <laughs> you didn't give it to us as depth as you know it. So I literally, I wrote Know the Name, Know the Person, and it stands for personality, how you'll know somebody's personality. Then I wrote, know the name, know the spirit. What's your soul's purpose? And how do you know what you're here to experience and what to learn? And then so many people were saying, you're getting more out of that second chapter than what we're getting. And in the second chapter of the first book, I literally say, okay, if you can't apply this right away, what good is it? Okay, that's my practicality in my name. So I literally said, okay, suppose you're a car salesman or you're selling something else. How would you approach the A? How would you approach the E? How would you approach, you know, each of the vowels? This is what you would do. And I literally spell that out in chapter two of the first book. But then everybody said, there's stuff in there that you assume that you've said that we need more detail on. So literally the third book is the skinny book. I call it skinny because the two are fat. And, and I literally spelled out these vowels because so much is in the vowels. The vowels always show us our emotions and we connect one person to another through our emotions, you know, through our feelings. And so it really, the vowels always represent our feelings. Okay. And then the consonants represent our attitudes. Okay. Damn. And so the third book is just about the feeling books because that's how you're going to connect yeah. to somebody. No. Okay. That's, that's, Wow. Wow. This, all of this keeps blowing me away because I keep sitting here going, wow. Okay. There's so, there's so much to go into regarding all of the, 
all of your research, all of your like nearly 20 years worth of research, really, let's face it. I mean, 15 years research, three years testing it, but like it's been like, what, 30 odd years? But I've been doing it now yeah, for 30 I was years. Say. So I keep learning more and more, you know, and that's why, that's why this book is coming out fairly soon. It'll be Know the Name, Know the Health, which is what predispositions are in our name health-wise. What do we have to look for? Okay, what are what are the challenges that are already in our bodies? Because the thinking is that if you can take care of the challenge that's already sits in your body, whatever your weakest link is, then if you keep that part healthy, then the body will keep the rest of it healthy. Wow. Do you think some something, someone was pushing you down this avenue, this uh, to discover, you know, what you've discovered within names as such, as though there was. I think there was a divine hand. I, I think that I I must have done this somewhere else in another dimension, another time, another space, another something. But, you know, I started uh, meditating when I was 18. I, I read the Bible for myself at 13. And then the 14th was the Bhagavad Gita. And then the 15th was the Book of Mormon. And I took a big book you know, like the Nag Hammadi or whatever. I took a big book for a year to read along with anything else I could get my hands on because um, both you and I have in our names that we're avid readers, okay? So I read as much as I possibly could. Um, and then I started meditating when I was 18. And so by the time I started figuring this, I started teaching when I was 20. So I was 26 when this started coming to me. But you think about it, I had already been meditating eight years. I think I was, as the word goes, inspired by God. To go and yeah, this yeah. Word. Yeah, no, it just it just seems as though there was a code, you know, there's a code there. And like we've already discussed, you know, the universe is mass as such. And um it's almost like somebody said was saying to you, hey, you know, this, there's a pattern and a code in all of this that people need to know and to understand regarding how they communicate and, and talk to each other. And I suppose uh, for and I have done research into this, but not very much. But like they say that we're now going into the era of um, discovery and spiritualization and actually more in depth um discovery uh, as us as human beings you know and i can't think what the actual era is and i'm sure you know um so we're going from the age of pisces into the age of aquarius there we go aquarius one. was in my brain but i was going i'm not sure i'm going to say that because i don't know if that's right but if you look at the indian tradition we're going into the kali yuga time period and all of it, if you look at all the different traditions without having to name them all from the different aspects or whatever, we're going, the earth is now transversing through space and going into the proton belt. We are calling it the proton belt, even though I don't, I think that's our made up name for it. I don't think that's what everybody else would call it. But anyway, uh, we're going into the proton belt and in the proton belt, things vibrate at a faster rate. And so we have got to up our game. So those people that are more open or flexible or clear in their thinking um, are going to do just fine. And we get to turn around and help the ones that this is more of a challenge for. But as we go into the proton belt, we're going to be going into fourth dimension and then fifth dimension. Okay. Now, if we look at it, what we call Christ consciousness is actually fourth dimension. Okay. So that's our next step. And then after fourth, we're going to be pushed into what everybody's calling ascension, which is fifth dimension. Okay. And so it just means that we're going to learn how to vibrate faster. So in this fourth dimension and fifth dimension, we can create that much quicker. So the key to this, remember, I gave all those talks on spirituality. So the key to this is the two minutes before you go to sleep at night, in three words or less, say what you really want to create in your world and who you wish to be as if it was already that way and you're giving thanks for it. So I am something or love being a movie star or love being whatever, 
You know, you want to condense it though as small as you can. Okay. And and you so you're going to sleep. When we're sleeping, we're going into that fourth dimensional realm. So you want to pull that idea with you so that you can be working on it at sleep in your fourth dimension because you're bringing some of that energy back to you then in the third dimension when you wake up. And therefore, the fourth dimensional energy will help push you in that direction to create that which you are constantly repeating every night before you go to bed. Easiest way to create. Okay, fantastic. Well, I write every day that I want my salary to be 150K a month, <laughs> but I not happened yet, but I've only been doing it for six months. So maybe I need to be saying this before I go to bed. Okay. So when you write every day, when you're going to create something like that, first of all, you have to believe it's possible. If there's any kind of doubt in you, then it, it goes out the window. Then you want to write because you're creating very specifics. You're going to not, not that you want the word want means you lack and the universe says, oh, look, she wants to lack that some more. So she, they're helping you create the lack of it. So instead you say, thank you as if it's already happened. Thank you for my salary of da, 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 or more. And you write that 12 times and then you write 12 things that you're grateful for. And then all during the day, you keep your brain in the most positive direction possible so that you're keeping your vibration up. And if you do that process every day for six months, oh, you'll okay, watch how it I only manifest. really write three things that I'm grateful for every morning and uh, and affirmations and like what will make my day awesome. And yeah. I have to say, if I don't do it, if I don't do my little routine every morning, I do find that my day is a mess. Like it, it's a mixture of things. Um, and if I do do them in the morning and I do sort of focus my brain in as such, and then in the evening, I sort of write down what has made my day awesome and what I need to focus on for the next day or for the next month or whatever. Um, and a very different thing. I mean, you can you can pick them up from like, you know, uh, it's a morph, morphing of Tim Ferriss and what he does and Tony Robbins and various different other people that I've like morphed together into my own little thing that right. i do the magic number is 12 12 so just like there were 12 disciples so it, because there's 12 aspects to anything so you want to write the same sentence 12 times i am grateful for or thank you for providing blah 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 and then 12 and i'm grateful for whatever and then there's a really cool song by an australian named michelle blood that literally is a song that she sings. It's very catchy. It's on her album for success. And it's literally her greet the morning song. And it sets the tone. If you play that in the morning, it's a fairly long song for as long as songs go. And you play that in the morning, it gets you all in the right mood to keep going. And she's got your wonderful Australian accent when she's doing yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. Well, I haven't got an Australian accent, so it's not my accent. But like, yeah, because the Aussies, the Aussies listening to this will be going, she's so not Australian. It's untrue. But anyway, it's all good. Um, no, no, no. So, OK. Wow. So Michelle Blood has a Welcome the Morning song. Yeah, it's a welcome song and it's on her album for success. Okay, wow. OK, I've never heard of her, but great. I'm definitely going to be Googling that. OK, and it's 12 times. So it's 12, th so you write down something 12 times and then you write 12 separate things that you're grateful for. Correct. So you read redundant and every morning. Times on what Do they have to be different to every morning? Every morning. 12 things that you're choosing to create, 12 things you're grateful for, six months. And if Over you six months. Does it have to be six months? Can it not be 12 days? Because that would be so much better if we could cut this down a bit. Yeah, I have no, quite a few things that I want. Six months. <laughs> and the, the thing with this one is, it's very, very powerful. But if you miss a day, you start your six months all over. All right. See, I was going to ask that. I was going to ask that. Because, like, I don't beat myself. I, like, I do I do it virtually every day but there are some days I look I'm a single mum with a six-year-old so there are some days where I just you know forget to do it or life is a bit hectic and yeah and then you do it before you go to bed instead of when you're getting up yeah as long as you do it in that day it doesn't matter like where in that day as long as you do it. okay well that's all right you just set an alarm don't you right and Claire there were days when I was doing this there were days when I was testing it and doing it 
And it absolutely is productive. And the people I was doing it with, I had accountability partners. So, you know, we'd get together once a week and they would do all our dates and how's it going. Anyway, the some days I would do it like at 1130 at night. And then at midnight, I go, it's already the next day. I'm doing this again while I'm up and I'm doing it. <laughs> you okay, know, I'm getting both enough. days done. Okay. Wow. Watch this space, everyone. I'm going to try and attempt to do this over the next six months. But yeah, no, okay. 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 So if I may. I'm going to need a bigger book, though. Right? I'm going to need a bigger well, book. I've got a little A5 book at the moment. I'm going to need like a big A3 one at the rate I'm going. Yes. And, and the other thing is our vocabulary is so important. Yes. So there's six words that, that my team that works with me says we ought to just erase from the vocabulary. And one of them you just used, and that's what reminded me of this, and that's the word try. If you try to pick up a clash glass, you either do succeed at it or you fail. So trying simply says, I'm going to fail, but I'm going to have a really good excuse. I know I, I, and I've, I do use it and I do punch myself in the face occasionally when I use it because I completely agree with you. To my mind, like it really bugs me and I know because I'm using it, but it really bugs me when somebody says, oh, I'll try and get that sorted for you by five o'clock because I go, well, you might as well have said I'm not going to be able to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow because try, like you said, try means, well, I might fail at it. So it's not as though, you, so if you said, I am going to do that by five o'clock, you know that you, that person will definitely do that. But try is a bit of a wishy-washy word and um, it's sort of going, well, mm, I'm not going to. You don't yeah. expect success. Yeah, exactly. Not if you're trying. There's no, and so I would replace try with I'll do my best. I'm going to okay. do my best to get that done. Okay. Okay, so what are these other words then? I'm fascinated now. I know we've got a bit off the nameology stuff, but I'm fascinated because language is so important, so important. So so two of the words are want and need. So we talked about want a little bit earlier, but need goes along with it. The energy of want and need is lack. So when you tell the universe, I want money, let's say, then it's, Then the universe says, oh, she lacks money and she's choosing to lack some more. Let us help her. (laughs) Okay. Because they translate it with the vibration, which is lack. And that's the opposite of saying, I am a money magnet. Which one do you think is going to bring you more? I'm a money magnet or I lack money. (laughs) Right. So lack and want, lack and want are two of the words that we want to, that we choose to eliminate. And then. Um, another one is can't. When you say I can't do something, you're saying there's some mysterious power outside of myself that's holding me back and not allowing me to do that. You're literally giving your power away to something out there. You're just like throwing it in the trash. When you say I'm choosing not to do that, that is so powerful. It, it doesn't cause you to be a victim. You're still in charge of you know, you're making your choices for you. And so instead of I can't blah, 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 it's I'm choosing not to blah, blah, blah. Because yeah. I don't choose to do that. Yeah. Well, kids use yeah. it. Kids use I can't so much. Like my son will go, I can't do that, mummy. And I go, no, no, no. It's not about you can't do it. You can do it. You've just got to think about a different way. The way you're doing it means that you can't achieve it. You have to think about a different way. How are you going to, you want to do X. So the way you're mentally thinking about it, you've got a blocker there or whatever. There's another solution. You've just got to think of a different solution. It could be that he goes, I can't walk along that wall because I, you know, it's too high or whatever. And I'm like, well, how are you going to, How how can we, you know, what solution is there? Well, you could walk along the wall if you held my hand. That's another solution to the, you know, what you want to achieve as such. So I'm trying to get him to think of that because this, the, we don't use the word can't in our house because, you know, right. so it's and always, yeah. Substitute it with the word choice. I'm choosing not to or I'm choosing to do it. Then the fifth word is should. It doesn't even sound nice to be should on. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> okay. fair. So when you're using the word should, you're either giving your power away to somebody else. What should I be doing? Okay. And then we get upset when they should on us because we don't like to be should on. 
And then, and then if we do it and it doesn't turn out the way we want, we get angry. And if we don't do it, then we feel guilty. So either way, either way, when you should on yourself or you let somebody else do that, then you're either going to get mad or feel guilty. So throw that one out. <laughs> okay. And then the last one is why. Why this? Why that? Why whatever? Why takes you in circles? But if you ask the other things like what and how and when, they move you forward. But why you're going in circles and circles and you're not going to accomplish it. Yeah, I've, I've never, I try not to use why, I, I have to agree. And like, I hadn't looked at it from your perspective. But whenever, and I've tried to look at it from my perspective, whenever ever anybody's gone, why did you do that? Right? I've always gone on the defensive. It's almost as though they're like accusing me of something, right? Why did you steal the blah, blah, blah? Or why did you do the X, Y, and Z? Or why did you paint it like that? So they're like going, it's an accusational, right? So I have tr I try. I try. So it means I'm going to fail. Um, and I do fail sometimes. Like you said, it's more around, well, what made you do it that way? or what? Because it's more inquisitive and inquiring, not accusational, is like why I'm, I'm using, like why I'm using the open questions. Well, if you just ask somebody, explain your choice to me. Yes. It's, it's, know, more, it's, it, it's kinder, isn't it? Yes, and, and I'm doing my best to understand, you know, this choice of yours so that I can – cope with it better or whatever you know but it's it's much better because it's non-judgmental and this is probably this conversation we've just had is probably because we both like to learn and do all of the communication -y stuff that we need to do because it's both in our names I don't know but like I'm sitting here going wow all this conversation is nothing to do with nomology but we've I've just learned so much so it's great and I've not read a thing yet <laughs> But this type of thing is in the second book, Know the Name, Know the Spirit, when I go through what your soul chose to learn based on the placement of the letters yeah. in oh. your name. Hang on a second. Here's my control freak. It's, you can, sweetheart, but I'm... Oh, I'm so sorry. Hang on a second. So, that's all right. May I make a suggestion afterwards? Yes, of course. Go ahead. Okay. So you know that he's going to be a boss one day. Oh, well, okay. Let's hope he's a good because one. Because names that start with an O, yes. names that start with an O are going to end up being CEOs or at least have autonomy. So when he's doing something that you would prefer, he would do something differently. You simply say, when you become the boss, are you going to like it when people come and interrupt you when you're in the middle of something? When you become the boss, are you going to permit this or not do this? So you want to lead by example. So you don't want to do the things that you're not going to want other people doing to you. Oh, okay. I'm loving your work. You constantly bring it back to when you're the boss, because he'll, that way he's already got it in his mind. His name says, yes, he's going to be the boss, but you're already acknowledging that and helping him get there because he's okay, already going to fantastic. start thinking like he's Happy the days. boss. Thank you for that. That would be awesome. I can't wait. Can he be the yeah. boss when he's like 15? That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? There's a lot of people that start companies when they're 15. They start their own. Podcast. Oh, I know. Don't because I've already sat there and gone, right, what can he do? He wants to be He wants to be a YouTuber. That's what he said. Mommy, I said to him, what do you want to be when you grow up? You'd think like, you know, vet, doctor, nurse, whatever, fireman, blah, blah, blah. No. Mommy, I want to be a YouTuber. And I'm like, great. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. But I'm like, okay. That means that he can go online and he can give his opinion of different products and services and whatnot and have tune in and find out whether I think this works and this is valuable or not and oh, why. scary, isn't it? And there you go. Yes. He, he, yeah, he does know what he knows and it's quite interesting. Um, it's funny because when you were saying about names and different spellings and stuff like that, his, his middle sister's name is Poppy but it's spelt with an E. So it's P-O-P-P-E-Y. Um, and when you were saying about spellings of different names and stuff like that, I was like, wow, okay, wow. That would be um, interesting because she's not got many, she's not got many vowels in her name, but lots and lots of consonants as such. So. Well, in Poppy, the P's are consonants, but the 
O and the E and the Y are all the vowels. Oh, they are actually. <laughs> How did I forget about okay. the Y? Yeah, that's right. So that's true. <laughs> so, so in her name, it would literally say that she wants to nurture everybody about her. She's going to use her power of influence to convince them to think more along her way of thinking. And at the same time, she wants to rescue everybody. Well, I'm not sure about the rescuing, but I definitely know that she wants everyone to think how she's thinking. And God love her because she's such a an awesome little whirlwind in herself. Um, so, yeah, no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, and give her some time. She'll get into that rescue. And then it's 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 not on her birth certificate as her first name. So it simply means intermittently she'll want to do that. Not oh. consistently. Okay, well, there we go. She, like, no, she, yeah. I mean, both, because Oscar's got two sisters, so the older one is Cadell. Look, I bet, well, let's not leave her out, because otherwise she may, like, have a fit. So Cadell, C-A-D-E-L-L. Okay, so she's got writing talent. Oh, she okay. also may have a little clutter around her, you know, not be as neat and tidy as maybe you'd like. Wow, well, wow. Well. Then I'd have you to know. speak. I'll speak to her mum about that over Christmas because we're going to stay with her mum. Um, so I'll speak. I don't know. I'm trying to think what Cadell's bedroom looks like and is it tidy? But um, yeah, no. But she has a, a good, strong sense of self. She does. Okay? And and she's here on mission for God. That's in that name. Oh, Only two wow, percent okay. of the population is on mission for God at any one time. Wow, and so her okay. name is she's on mission for God. And one of the things that she came to experience and get really good at is not giving her power away to others. Wow. Okay. Well, she wants to be a paramedic. So um, I'm not sure where the writing comes into that, but I'm sure her life journey will move her down different avenues and maybe she'll write about being a paramedic. I don't know. And, and we don't know because we think about it that I didn't even start writing my books until I was in my late fifties. And if somebody would have told me, you know, you're going to be, end up being a writer. I would have looked at him and said, I went into math, so I wouldn't have to, <laughs> you know, I would have said, you are a crazy. And yet here, the fifth book is ready, almost ready to come out. So um, I agree with you. you know, like you I was know. always math. I was always math orientated, love my math, loved the organization of math and stuff like that straightforward very business minded so very much about well what was my ROI on like what do I invest ROI back on that economics blah 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 and um English was my worst subject ever it was you might as well have been speaking to me in an alien language like English literature and interpreting books and and I love books and I love reading books all different types of books but um yeah actually interpreting what they meant and stuff I obviously wasn't on the same wavelength as the examiners that's all I can say they were obviously reading some different part of the book because it wasn't the same as me but yeah all bring our own experiences so we're interpreting what we're reading through our own set of experiences yeah. and so they're saying here's the genetic experiences and you're saying those genetic experiences I didn't share I had these uh, yeah and therefore you would interpret it differently yeah and I was always a bit quirky with stuff so um yeah that's because your name says you don't like to follow the rules <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> I don't know. You have to speak to my mum about that. Um, but yeah, no, God love her. Um, yeah, wow. So, okay. So, um, so with all of this, like, how does knowing all of this actually, um, how, how can it help us basically going forward? Because I know like you're, you're being used by corporates now. Yeah, to but I'm not being used if I'm being utilized. That's another word. I, you know, I'm being utilized by You others. definitely are, yes. Um, so attorneys um, utilize my skills to help pick juries. HR departments utilize them to uh, decipher all the people that have applied with the job description. I can look at who's the best matches. Um, they also utilize my skills for if, if like some employees aren't getting along with others and the business doesn't want to lose any of them, but none of them want to stay and work with the other person or the other people or whatever. And then we look at names and say what needs to happen so that everybody's happy campers again. Okay. And so that's been very successful. And then um, real estate people call me when they have an address 
and they go, this house should sell between this price range. What's our special number? What date should we put it on? What's our what should our thing say down below so that we're attracting the right kind of people that are going to be attracted to this particular house? Because when you've got an address, it tells you what it's going to be like for the people living in that house, what your neighbors are going to be like, and if you're going to like the laws and the rules that you're going to have in that community. All of that shows up in the address. So that's so, from the actual name of the street as such? Yeah, just the address. Now, you're ever going to write it on that envelope if you're getting mail. So all of that okay. gives you all of that information. So they'll call me up and ask me that. And so, yes, different businesses are utilizing this service. But more times than not, it's individuals when they want assistance in how to get better along with somebody else or to understand somebody else better. Because like I said, you can compare two names and see where the potential conflicts are. And, and the solutions, that's what I like. The solutions are in the name. You can look at a name and see why, like in a first half hour reading with me, I go over certain things always the first time you talk with me. I do why you picked your mother. Why would your soul want that lady to be your mom? What did you learn from having her? And then why would your soul pick that man to be your dad? What did you learn from having that one as a father? You know, how did that help you for what you came to experience? And then the seven subsets of your overall goal of while you're here. And then, of course, that overall goal. And then as they get more time with me, then it's we can compare names. We can answer a ton of questions. You know, like if you want to ask the universe anything, the majority of the answers are going to be sitting there in your name. Wow. And are there, yeah, so, so, and are there any names? Because you make it sound as though everyone is able to get on with everyone else. But are there any names that just are really are going to be very difficult at getting on with? Well, it depends on. I have an article on my on my website in the blog section that says some of the hardest names out there, and it's not that. It's the hardest for all of us. It's the hardest because they have most conflict oh, in their wow. names. Okay. Okay. So like some names self-sabotage themselves. Some names are always waiting around for the big reward, you know, but it, they keep getting older and older. And when's that reward coming? You know, um, it's just, there's some really challenging names out there. I really believe that if you're willing to put in the work and the effort, because it's not always the easiest you can get along with anybody that you choose to once you understand the name because you understand what they require and able to get along with them. I look at some names and when I compare them to my names, I think that name takes too oh, much effort. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> you know, there's enough people in the world. I don't need to spend time with that name because that name takes so much more effort on my part. You know, and there's certain names that I think for me, now they're not going to be the same names for other people because you got to compare them to your name. And there's there's a handful of names for me that when I hear that name or somebody says they're that name, I think wasn't even nice meeting you. I need to get out of here. <laughs> See, <laughs> you know, Dave's just, for me. Dave's are always trouble. Always trouble. They're nice. I get on with the Dave's, but Dave's every Dave I've had in my life has been trouble, <laughs> and I don't know why. Well, see, when you compare names, you'll all of that shows up and you go, oh, this is what makes this one difficult or yeah. hard for me. Not that we didn't get on. We always got on. I, like, on, uh, That's because you have the same communication style because you have the wow, same first vowel. Okay. Well, yeah. So anybody with the same first vowel, it's easier to connect right away because you already have the same communication yeah. style. You already have so many basics. The same. Oh, okay. Well, and, and that may well be we, like we always get on, but it like then just goes into a whole world of mess uh, towards the end. So Dave's are a complete nightmare, whether they're friends, relationships, so my, whatever, nightmare. <laughs> my suggestion would be don't call him Dave, call him David. Okay. Okay. I'm sure David's are just the same though. <laughs> They're okay. <laughs> no, I'm I'm sure I'm sure they're not. But yeah, no, it's yeah, wow. It's like it's it's like I feel as though I'm just putting my toes in the water here. It's like there's a whole like it's it's like being on an iceberg. Like I'm on the iceberg, but there's so much under the water that like is left to be discovered. So okay, look. So 
how do people like how do people get in contact with you like how because um because you've got a website haven't you the easiest way, the easiest way is through the website at knowthename.com that website has so much information on it and it's a very old-fashioned looking website and so just know the name. And if you're traveling around right now or you don't have a place to write it down, you, when you get home, you just say, you know, I really need to know the name of that website. And you go, oh, yeah, know that was it. Know the name. Perfect. Um, dot com. And then the other website we have, but it's very sparse, but it's more of a modern way. And then it eventually will take you over to the older one is called The Name Lady. You know, I listen to that name lady. The name the lady. Lady. Com. Com. Okay, fair enough. And like I know you, you were saying about the third book, um, which is Know the Name, Know How to Connect. How do people get access to that information, that third book? On any page other than the home page on knowthename.com, uh, there's a little box in the upper right hand corner. And you fill in your name and your email address, and it asks you for a password, and then it lets you in on the site. There's a member site, and then that book will go into your member site. So anytime you purchase a product from Spirituality 101 that everybody says is more like 2001 or whatever, you know, there's so much information in there, 18 hours of it. Um, or if you wanted level one or whatever else you're choosing to get access to, we just dump it in that same place okay so that automatically dumps that in and gives you access to the member site with that book that's in there so then you can wow. read it online oh no Absolutely. thank you for that no I'm definitely joining in and having a read of that book I'll do I'm going to read it over Christmas and then um you know and then I'm going to come into the new year new year new me new discovery regarding names and all of that stuff no look um I'm not even sure I, I should ask this next question because I feel like you've already discovered this. But like I ask all the people I interview, um, like what would your superpower be, right? What would – if you could choose a superpower, um, what would it be? But part of me feels that it's irrelevant asking you this because I think you've already discovered it. But like I'll ask it. Yeah, superpower is to be able to read a name. So there's no secrets when you're introduced to somebody, you know their name, and boom, you're oh, off, exactly. you know who you're speaking with. Um, but, if, but if I okay. had a different superpower, we added you another okay. one in. Look, not um, a different one. We'll add you another one in. Let's not lose <laughs> this one. I, I would want to be like bewitched and be able oh. to tweak my nose and be able to produce and share with people that. So that suffering oh, went yeah. away. Yeah, no, that would be a very admirable um, superpower. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I agree. Pain and suffering, let's take it all out of the world because I think it just adds to so many problems in our world. Well, I think because I spent 40 years in education, um, 29 as a teacher and 11 as an administrator, what I got to witness that some of our kids go through I just, I would love to have been able to just relieve them of suffering and give them all fabulous families and their needs are met. You know, I would love that for our children. Imagine for a minute, Claire, what our world would be like if every child grew up feeling fed, cared for, loved, and given a lot of time and attention. They would feel like they were worthy individuals and they would be kind to others because they'd been treated with kindness. I mean, I would just no. I completely agree. I completely agree. Um, I, I look and and being a single parent, there are definitely times I get buttons pushed. But there are some things that I read in the media and stuff like that that I go, how could another human being do it? You know, how could one human being do it to another human being? That's a adult, let alone a, a child. The things that we do to children, um. And the suffering they go through is just unbelievable. But I look at how long that parent, that adult has suffered, or they couldn't have done that to another one. You know, I just, I would just like to relieve the world and the individuals in the world of suffering and let everybody have a connection to God or the Supreme Being or whatever name you want to give that entity, um, the prime creator so that they have that closeness so that even if you are alone, you never feel alone. That even if you are not 
getting what you would like your needs met from others, you know you're getting a met from the prime creator. You know, I would wish that for everybody, especially our children. I mean, I just, it, in different, I've, I've taught in 11 of the, our states in the United States and in so many, I would just want to hug that child, you know, and just say, it's going to be okay. We're going to make this right. You've got a safe place. And yet in the majority of our states, at least here in the United States, we're not allowed to touch kids or we can only touch on the shoulder or because they want to make sure the kids aren't abused in that manner and that they do feel safe. And yet it's sometimes you just think, oh my God, this yeah. child just needs a hug. Oh, look, I completely agree with you because there's so many rules and regulations and, and I understand why they're all there, I, you know, I abuse and all of those sort of things. But it is like you say, um, you know, sometimes they just need a hug. They just need to be supported, to be cared for. And um, because they're kids, you know because they're there. children. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if that's one thing I do do, um, no matter how many buttons he pushes and no matter how much of a CEO or whatever he's going to be when he's older, that is the one thing that I do do with him. You know, I just feel, you know, he needs a hug um, and to be hugged and to be loved because, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe that's my name. I always think that if if every child could grow up knowing that they were loved, like I, I know that I was not a perfect parent, but none of us are, okay? I also know that I was an excellent parent, okay? And, and I define an excellent parent if your child grows up to be a good person contributing to society and they know they were loved. That's yeah. it. No, I look, and, and, that's, and that's why the title of this podcast is, um, you know, Strong, Single and Human. Because at the end of the day, being a single parent, you have to be strong because you're dealing with a lot of the things on your own. You're definitely single because that's a single parent bit. And then, but, but then we're all human. You know, at the end of the day, um, we're human. You can't be this super being who can, you know, feed your children, be working full time and do all of these various different other things. You know, um, you've, you've got to give time to yourself. You've got to balance. And, and I, so, and I so empathize with that because I became a single parent when my kids were eight and nine. And I was also developing... You know, I was 26 when I started on this and I had my first child at one month before I was 27 and my second child one month after I was no longer 27, you know, and then it wasn't, you know, and then when they turned eight and nine, I became single. I was still working on this stuff and it's, it's juggling all of their demands, plus your job, plus I just learned to live on four to six hours of sleep at night. <laughs> Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, it's, I don't know how else Well, no, to and you just keep going. You just sit there and keep going for the kids, for yourself, for your sanity, for everything. You just got to keep moving. Yeah. Well, and my common prayer as, as my son was very, very smart, and very clever, and, and we do uh, different things. I would literally say, God, this is your child in my care. And right now he needs his father. So you do something. <laughs> Make it happen. The right person in his world, yeah. <laughs> you know. The right person I might in his try world. that one. Make then. sure he gets the peace. <laughs> you know, you're his dad, and right, we're all your children, and he needs his dad right now. Yeah. So make it happen. Yep, sort it out. Put somebody in his life to influence him. No, that's fair enough. Look, thank you so much. I know you're really busy with everything that you're doing. Um, I, you know, all of the podcasts and everything that you're doing as well. The books. Uh, all of that stuff so look thank you for your time today um i really appreciate it i don't know how late it is where you are because i'm in australia and you're in the states so i'm not sure what time it is but thank you um it's a real pleasure to speak to you really is thank you i've learned so much today anytime claire you're a pleasure and i love sharing what knowledge we have i think you know, we go through different stages in life and by the time you're at my age you just want to be able to give back as much as you can well, I hope I live that long. <laughs> Sorry, that makes you sound really old. No, no, no. But like, you know, I sometimes think that, you know, I'm not going to make the next couple of years out. But yeah, it's all good. It's the joys of being a single parent. 
<laughs> no, look, thank you. Thank you. Look, um, happy Christmas. And I hope you have a good new year and everything because we're so close to Christmas now. Um, yeah, thanks. And um, I'll speak to you maybe in the new year. Sounds great. <laughs> See Thank you later. Happy holidays. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast and would like to hear more, please hit subscribe wherever you like to hear podcasts. If you'd like to support us further, share this episode with your friends and family on all the usual social media platforms that you're normally on. And finally, drop us a review on iTunes as I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments and ideas. It all helps me to understand and produce awesome content that I know you're going to want to hear like this. If you want to check out past episodes, write to us, appear on the podcast or for links, resources and show notes, go to our website www.strongsingleandhuman.com. We are also on all the usual social media platforms, Insta, Facey and Twitter. Have a wonderful week and I hope to see you back here again soon. Be kind to yourself and remember, no one's perfect and we're all just putting one foot in front of the other and doing our best. I'm Claire Martin and you've been listening to the Strong, Single and Human podcast.